what last year taught me. 2022, you came and you flew. Although technically, we know that here on this channel, we regard the new year as springtime, okay? So for me, this season is the time that is loading into spring, okay? So you get clear, you transmute, you transform, you get discipline, but you also rest, okay? Okay? Don't be mistaken. You ain't supposed to be out here doing the most because it is a time of just stillness. But also, there is action in stillness. There's action in patience, but it's... It has to be the right action, not just any action. That's what throws it off. So for me, this time is a time to reflect. And what better thing to do than to talk about what I learned last year so I can know what better to do in this year ahead. <laughs> I personally love astrology so I use astrology as a way to understand and for me again my birthday is my new year okay and my birthday happens to be in March also why this is a very significant time for me and why it's always important to be learning where you come from and remembering where you come from but not so you can harbor on it not so you can get caught up in your feelings i know that's what a lot of people be doing out here they be getting caught up in their feelings and they be doing the most and they be just out here being some little lazy ass bitches whining and complaining and not really doing nothing and just being complacent in life which is really it's just opt energy okay op energy okay <laughs> But that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about reflecting on the energy, okay, in a way that we are not only looking at the world and everybody else, but really looking at ourselves, you know, really getting a perspective of ourselves of how did we show up? What did we do? And again, I like to use astrology as a reference, as well as certain spiritual texts that I read from and pull from, like the 42 Laws of Ma'at and certain Ifa principles, you know, but also just being a child of the seasons, I, I grow with the flow, okay? But for me, in this video, I'm just going to share with you guys a few of the things that I learned this year and that will be really informing how I move forward in the years to come okay when you utilize your spiritual tools in real time okay whether you like it or not whether it feels good or not normally there's a breakthrough on the other side okay so that's also the point of me expressing what i express which i don't even think i need to be saying that could this sunlight is it the that's the actual sun oh that's the actual i found the sun <laughs> it's like I found the act the sun came out first off. This has been a cloudy ass day. So let me pause. Okay. We found this the sun found me for real. What's good? Eh. Hey, let me let me come down. Let me meet you. Ooh. 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 <laughs> Leave this in the video too. Don't take this out. Look at that. Hey. Just take a moment to be, to be present, to find God, yes, to soak in those moments because even when it's a cloudy day, the sun is still shine. It'll still come out if only for five minutes, if only for two seconds, okay? Okay, now let's get back. All right, back to our regularly scheduled programming this video is featuring the sun <laughs> so we're not going to trip about the lighting we're just going to let the sun be the sun okay and it's going to come and go as it pleases and we're just going to be grateful for whatever parts of us gets illuminated <laughs> okay all right so the first jewel that i am taking with me into this new year okay is that putting others before myself will only ever turn into a passive aggressive mess. And hear me out. And also, a lot of these thoughts are thoughts that obviously I've been reflecting on. Some of them like probably my whole life. Some of them this season. Some of them, you know, with this age. But 
some of the shit might be kind of deep. Some of it might be very shallow and basic, okay? So what do I mean by putting others before myself? I mean, when I'm thinking about other people, even when it comes to creating, if I'm thinking about how other people feel about a song or feel about a class or a workshop before I'm thinking about what I think of it, that's bad, okay? If I'm thinking about what my mom or my partner or whomever, my lover, friends, whoever, if I'm thinking about what those people are thinking about me over what I think about me for myself or as a way to like be the root or to validate what I think or feel, no, okay? No, it's a mess because I'm actually not tuned to be like that, okay? I actually do not, I can't sit in that energy. Some people, I've noticed, some people can sit in that energy and it really like, it don't do good for nobody to be honest, but some people can sit in that energy and it just, they can make it work for them. I can't, my spirit, body, everything repels it. I, I, it is not in my calling, my destiny, none of that, okay, for me to like move or operate like that so it becomes a passive aggressive mess, okay? I have to center myself and find um, rootedness in myself and recognize that I do uh, gain strength in partnership, but I have to first have strength in myself. You know, I am a person who does benefit from partnership, even just the way my astrology is set up, the way my makeup is set up. I know that in partnership, I flourish in different ways than when I am by myself. But I also know from that same astrology that that only works if I'm also flourishing in myself. I can only find the people that I'm supposed to be connected with if I am myself. If I'm coming from a place of needing to figure out myself and the only way I know how to figure it out is through other people, I need to be by myself until I get it together. Okay? Okay, something I just realized that as I go into this next chapter, next season, next decade, okay, not even like that can't, we can't even do that. Don't, e don't even entertain it. Don't even pretend, okay? And I know that because when other, when, when I feel it and, and, and experience it, it's like I get this, I get turned, I literally get disgusted. I literally am like, this is below me because it technically is below the frequency that I have risen to and that is how also you honor and acknowledge the ways you've done the work okay don't keep lowering yourself if you know you did if you put in the work to be up here don't do dumb shit to bring you down here that clear that clear that clear <laughs> which takes me on to the next thing which is pretty much the last thing but just in a different way i no longer find strength in codependency yes okay because as a child of the 90s as a child raised with addiction, from addiction, through addiction, like that shit hasn't been embedded in me. Even if I, I've never, I ain't never did no hardcore drugs now, okay? I do be, you know, a little like, you know, Cheech and Chonging out here sometimes, you know, a little Chief Keish, Keish Chief, Keish be cheaping. <laughs> but that's about it. That's about it. I ain't never, well, you know, the mushroom sometimes. Hmm. I ain't telling y'all my business though, but that much I can, I can, but for real, if, if God didn't make it, Keisha don't partake in it, okay? That part. Okay, but I was birthed from parents who deal with addiction. So even being raised by a person who has an addictive mentality or has the personality of an addict, you know, or, but also has the personality of a genius, <laughs> you know, like, because both of my parents, they are brilliant, you know, and the world, they didn't know how to find themselves in the world or how to find their space, you know? And so they, they found ways to cope and, and to try to whatever, you know? So I know that I have that easy to like be afraid. And to me, the root of codependency is so deep, which I ain't going to get into all of that, but it's been very encouraging for me to realize the ways in which I've really outgrown the desire to cling to it because that's the part about healing it's like and that's the part even about addiction you know it's about it's not just the thing you're clinging to it's the the thing the need to cling <laughs> you know like and so I think for me like I've released the need to use codependency as a way to be a victim I've released it as a way to like you know hold myself back and so that's what I learned about myself in 20 22 so we're grateful for that. <laughs> Founder. Hey. Mm. Yeah. People be like, the sun is masculine. The sun. the sun is the sun. 
And if I'm a woman and the sun is reflecting me back to me, then the sun is feminine when I'm... The sun is feminine in my presence. Okay? You know, but also, I get it. This is my version of commercial. You're welcome. And me realizing that I have outgrown codependency is also giving me permission. And this is something that I've learned. Is that it's okay to find strength in partnership. It's okay to find safety and support in intimacy and connection and others. I know for me personally, sometimes I can go from one extreme to the other or I can get so fixated on one thing. So for me, it's really refreshing to allow myself to be able to see the beauty in partnership and not coming at it from a, I guess, unhealthy, you know, or extreme point of view and perspective and also recognizing that aspect within myself because like I said taking it back to even just the astrology of it all even the way my chart my human design is set up I am the type of person who does uh require partnership and connection the way my energy is set up even there's parts of myself that I only I see the most clear you know when I'm looking at reflections of me so and but that's just how I am but it can get skewed the wrong way depending on how healthy my energy is or where I'm coming from you know so it's lovely for me personally to be able to say to myself like it's okay to find beauty in partnership it's okay that you're a person wired for partnership it's okay you know but that makes me even more particular about my partnership and it also makes me more willing to rise to what is required to sustain healthy partnership and to divine partnership you know and to really grow and flourish and have not all partnerships are meant to be forever and for long times but you know to be able to have ones that can really last you know <laughs> As I'm stating these, I'm realizing that obviously it was a theme for me last year, okay? And I think it has to do with, with living in Belize and being away from family and sitting with myself and going through breakup and navigating like relationships and all types of things, you know, that just made me honor how I connect to relationship. But again, astrologically, that's been happening for everybody in the world. How we connect to relationships, value our relationships. If you over me, you know, shout, just tap in. My website is actually, I'm going to have an official launch, but you could tap in and I can tell you all about it. Astrologically, everybody has been being forced to reevaluate themselves and their relationships and are, uh, like for me I've been feeling like I've been trying to see if I'm good enough and then also looking at people in my life like are you good enough but like not just because if that was just one side if you were just only think about if you was good enough that could be bad if you was only looking at it, if everybody else was good enough that could also be bad but if you have a healthy balance of like reflecting on like okay how are these things feeding off of each other you know what do I need to do to call in more healthy you know connections more authentic connections you know more connections where I feel like I can be my fullest self because that is what my biggest issue was is having relationships where I felt like I couldn't be myself. I learned that I'm actually really good at being disciplined and taking care of myself. Like that's not something I actually need to like try to, you know, like when you, when I get older, I feel like there's certain things that at this point I've done it enough that I can just be like, okay, I think that's a, it would have to take something really serious to just like make me not be a person that craves or do that. I have a 52 year old brother and he still go work out because like working out is just part of his thing. You know, that's what he's always done. And I feel like that's me. At this point, I've just start build. I got muscles, but I've been like that since I was a child. Like, you know, I used to go work out with my brother. So I got to just, I can't make excuses, you know, but I think I didn't believe or trust in myself that I actually, that's like, I didn't believe that I was who I said I was, you know, it's like, oh my goodness, but <laughs> I do believe, you know, I do believe that I'm as disciplined as I say I am and as I portray myself to be and all the things, you know, but I'm also human, you know, and I'm also good at taking care of people and showing up for people. And I love that about myself. And 
I also love that I'm human about it. <laughs> like, so, but the main point was that I really do. I, I learned that like I am actually disciplined. If like if all odds fails, if you need a nigga to follow through, Keish will follow through. Mm. There is an art to being selfish. I had to pause on that because a lot of times when people use this word selfish, okay, they're really just describing immature behavior. They're describing a lack of emotional maturity. And I don't I don't even want to say capacity because people use the word capacity and sometimes it's like, nah, nigga, you just need to bum up, okay? But that's neither here nor there. But there really is an art to being selfish. And I believe that when you really learn how to center yourself, when you really learn how to focus on yourself, how to like, you know, make sure that you are fulfilling yourself and, and doing what it takes to live half the life you want to bring your dreams come true <laughs> nigga what did i say <laughs> see this is why you gotta slow you down you can take this okay this balance of you showing up for yourself and then you can also focus that same energy that you put into showing up for yourself onto other people and not onto them just like onto thinking about them or obsessing about them but onto actually showing up for them on to actually supporting them in the ways that they need to be showed up when you can use your selfishness for the benefit of other people's shit bro listen that my friend is when you have mastered something that my friend is when you are on the path okay again it starts with you but for me what i'm realizing with life because it's duality you know it's it just is what it is like you, nothing really matters until you can apply it you know <laughs> just like knowledge you know the knowledge it's nothing unless you can ap apply it like you know or information is nothing unless you can apply it whatever it is however you whatever you get in you if you can't if you talk about cooking all the time but nigga you can't go bake the recipe you can't make it happen you can't make the bread rise it ain't what are you doing what are you doing you know it's not real so Okay, get real close, because I don't want to say this one too loud, okay? But this one, this one, this one, this one really, it just blew my mind, okay? But as I was watching and observing, and within myself, but also within the world around me, okay? This is what I noticed, okay? Fear is addictive, and everyone's addicted. Oh my gosh! everybody okay from the smallest ones to the biggest ones just addicted to fear just whipping fear around using fear as advice using fear as all types of things okay and so what i learned last year was that i needed to dip that, that in the bud, bud okay not even it's just just need to get rid of it like and i also think again taking it back to the astrology of it all the planet pluto has been transiting my 12th house, okay, for the past 20 years. Now, Pluto rules death, transformation, rebirth, your shadows, the underworld, you know, and then 12th house rules the beyond, okay? It's, it's Neptune, it's, uh, it's um, traditionally Jupiter, okay? But then also aspects of Pisces, considered, according to people on the internet who just like to tie the signs in with the houses but specifically that 12th house energy is just really it's the unknown it's the subconscious it's it's once you just get to god the heavens the source it's the unknown it's your fears you know but it's also the your imagination it's your it's the things that your dreams it's everything that can come true but you know like that's really our mind and our psyche you know like that's how that shit works like you can think the most positive things and you can think the darkest things and a lot of time we be in conflict because we be afraid of our own scariest thoughts and so with pluto transiting my 12th house for the past 20 years i was forged having to get the fuck over my fears and face my fears not even get over them but face them so i have to really face them and to have them just like oh okay and as i was doing that it just made me notice fear everywhere you know even 12 house energy or that uh it just anxiety just the way that can show up okay and so but as i was peeping around and healing it within myself 
I've been noticing how many people are addicted to it and like it. People just want to be afraid. Stop it. Which takes me to the next point, okay? And the next thing that I learned, which I'm not going to go in on this one. I'm going to let you sit with this one, okay? The average person would rather be a victim than stand in their own divine power. Hell, to stand in their own human power. On a lighter note, though, I did also learn that what I really want out of life is to just be playful (laughs) and to not take myself so serious, okay? And that I also find that I get to experience my wisdom the most through forms that require me to be playful, you know? I get to experience my own inspiration the most. Even when you think about singing, I love like theater and and stuff like that. Even crafting, I like to scrapbook, (laughs) you know? Um, Those things though are when I just feel the most like tapped in when I'm making, when I'm making my medicines, when I'm like, you know, take me to, take me, walk me around Ikea. Walk me around a craft store, take me to an apothecary botanica. I just be like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. <laughs> but I feel like in order for me to truly honor my own experience and have my experience honored the way I need to, I need to invite more playfulness into the way I approach my work and my life and my connections. And I also need to only go in spaces that value that in me and that call that out in me and that want that for me as well, that see my joy and my innocence and who also are not afraid of seeing that within themselves because I know it's not about me, you feel me? But also. And the last and final thing that I personally learned in 2022, and for real, this can go for just any year. This is, I learned this last year, but this just, I think this more so just applies because of the time period in my life, okay? I really do just deserve beauty and adventure and growth and legacy and long life and health. And it's not about me not like, having a sense of self-value and worth, but there's a world where the a simple life, a life that really is just rooted in love and connection and nourishment and being close to nature and having an abundance of that, having an abundance of being able to take care of yourself, having an abundance of being able to, we should be able to experience other cultures. We should be able to connect and travel and like that should be a, Duh, that should be a given as long as we're here. And so something in me finally just clicked and realized like, no, that's what your destiny is, you know, because there is a part of me because of where I come from, you know, again, coming from addiction, coming from, you know, I grew up in a housing projects, you know, like I I have a mom who's still struggling with like her sense of value and like be having a life of codependency and stuff like that you know so come in you know my father died when I was young you know my parents weren't married or any of that you know and they weren't together you know so I just come from a very interesting narrative that in my brain struggle I come from struggle I come from people who have been caught up in their struggle caught up in their sadness caught up you know not that that's who they are to their core not that that's all they'll ever be but when I was created that's the energy that I came into so I've had to grow and transmute out of that and really truly believe that just because that's the way that I was created you know even thinking about it my parents were high (laughs) when I was conceived you know like I literally So it's like to think that, to have to really trust and believe that like that doesn't mean that that's what's promised for me. That doesn't mean that that's my destiny. That doesn't mean that that's all I'll ever be or that's all I'll ever have access to or be available for or even that my family, you know, like even even with that being a part of my mother's story, me just truly trusting and believing that that doesn't mean that that's how her life will end that doesn't mean that that will be what's left or what's known you know there's still time you know and I truly believe in my heart I truly accept in my heart that like 
you know the not that the worst has happened but i faced my fears <laughs> i have truly faced my fears and that makes me emotional to say so i know i know it's real so yes that's what i learned about myself and the world and other things um last year which specifically is 2022 but i feel like this video could be timeless depending on where you click on it so because we're always learning we're always growing and expanding and seeing new parts of ourselves seeing new parts of the world seeing new parts of each other and so it's going to be an ever evolving journey okay that's why we learn how to lean into the transformation and that's why you come here baby so you can tap into this healing and flavorful content here with your favorite cousin okay and if you if you're trying to find me to tap in okay you can find me here watch all my other videos hit me up at hoodalchemist.com okay book a reading you know tap in but i love you make sure to love yourself and we out yeah to hit a high note because i didn't really even sing in this video but it's okay if you say you don't then i know that you lying say you do not care then maybe why you crying you need to dive in make me your best friend